Peace, brothers and sisters. This is Hua Qi. Thank God it is time again for our Bible reading. Let's continue to read Genesis chapter 40. Today we will start from verse 6. Joseph was set up by Potiphar's wife and uh, put in prison. From outside, we can see that his situation went from bad to worse. However, his every step was in God's plan. God wants us to be humbled through many sufferings, even unreasonable treatments, so that our character can be trained and we could become God-dependent people. When we were lowered to the bottom, God would raise us up. It was there in the terrible prison, the cupbearer and the baker of fellow whom offended that master were also put in. Because of their special status, Potiphar assigned them to Joseph, and he attended them. By God's sovereignty, the cupbearer and the baker each had a dream in the same night. Let's read verse 6. When Joseph came to them in the morning, he saw that they were troubled. Joseph was very good at serving people. When you are serving others, you care about the situations. You need not only do your job, but also observe their reactions, so you know how to help them properly. Joseph saw they were troubled. Verse 7. So he asked Pharaoh's officers, whom were with him in custody, in his master's house. Why are your faces downcast today? Because of Joseph's temperament, he was easily trusted. When he was asking, the cupbearer and the baker willingly told him their troubles. Dear brothers and sisters, this is a very important practice for those who serve in the church. Every brother or sister in the church was bought by God for a great price. They have God's eternal life in them just like us. How can you help the saints when they have trouble? The first step is that they are willing to tell you their troubles. We need to learn to listen. Many times we have established a theological framework in our hearts and a way to interpret the Bible. No matter whom we come across, we bring this out. Yet. We are not able to help those in need. More importantly, how are we? Who are we? It was not that we know nor what we say, but whether we show our sympathy or empathy, empathize their feelings. They thus feel that our caring is not from men, but from God. Through you, God's grace flows to those in need. Joseph's character was that his life was centered around God. No matter where he was, he was seen as the man the Lord was with. People felt comfortable with him and willingly shared their hearts with him. Verse 8, they said to him, We have had dreams, and there is no one to interpret them. When talking about dreams, Joseph must be very familiar with. He was a dreamer himself. He was in the prison today because of his dreams. Though his own dreams were still pending, he was willing to help the cupbearer and the baker when they were in need. Joseph said to them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Everyone have had dreams. Dreams are the rearrangement, sorting, and filing of the information we have received. They are not the products of our minds. In the Old Testament time, God often used dreams to tell people what he was about to do. Joseph knew this well. Thus, he told the cupbearer and the baker, Do not interpretations belong to God? Since dreams are so important, does God speak to to Christians through dreams today? Though I cannot say no, at least this is not the main method God is talking to people today. We needed to have a concept of the framework of the entire Bible. Before the creation, God is whom He is in eternity past. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit were there. Revelation chapter 21 and 22 talked about the eternity future. 
Eternity means it is not bound by time. There is a passage of time between eternity past and eternity future. Time begins when God created, and ends at Revelation twenty one, the new heaven and the new earth, when New Jerusalem comes from heaven. This passage way can be roughly divided into four stages. The main Dividing point is Jesus. When Jesus came the first time, he divided the time into New Testament time and Old Testament time. In Old Testament time, Moses was one of the main characters. Before him, there was no law; therefore, we call it pre-law period or forefathers period. From when Moses brought the law to when Jesus came the first time was called the law period. Between Jesus' first coming and the second coming, we call it grace period. When Jesus comes the second time, he will bring the kingdom period. In pre-law period, God helped man understand His will through His act. Because Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, their spirits died. Man could no longer come before God. When man wanted to talk to God. Or should say, God wants to talk to man. He would use visions or dreams, which helped man to know God. In pre-law period, and among all the forefathers, Joseph was the most obvious one. He was a dreamer. Through the dreams, God told Joseph His will. Through interpre- interpreting dreams, Joseph was able to accomplish God's will. As we read the biography of every forefathers. In pre-law period, there were many stories. The principle of God leading people was based on His own act, acts. At Moses' time, God gave him the law. The law was the principle God acted upon. Thus, if a man wants to know God, he could do so through the law. He could know God through the principles God acted. The Relationship between man and God moved one big step forward. Since the law is God's principle, and man was unable to understand it because of their stupidity, God had to raise up many prophets in Old Testament times to speak for God and to explain the principle. Until one day, God's own Son Jesus Christ came to the world. The New Testament began. The New Testament time also has two parts. The period between Jesus' first and second coming is the grace period, because Jesus died and was raised again, and He sent the Holy Spirit to live in man. Thus, the grace replaced the law, because in grace we can know God Himself. The grace period ends at Jesus' second coming. He will bring the actual manifestation of God's grace. And it become the manifestation of God's kingdom. Today we are still in the grace period, or at the end of the grace period, we are more blessed than Joseph. To know God's leading for him, Joseph had to go by visions or dreams. Those of us who are in the grace period, once we believed Jesus Christ, we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and the Bible. It should be easier for us to understand God's will. However, many times when we are in the circumstances, we are like flies without heads, who were always in fear. Why? Joseph went through unfair treatment. He was put in prison. When there was a need, he could still calmly tell the cupbearer and the baker, "Do not the interpretations belong to God?" He knew God's will through interpreting dreams. Though we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and the Bible, we do not know what to do when we are in trouble. The main reason is that Joseph focused on God, yet we focused on ourselves. Self-focused people will be disappointed at the end because we are all sinners. Inside we have a sin nature; outside we have sin acts. We cannot better ourselves by ourselves. We focus not only on ourselves, but also on the circumstances. When the circumstances come, we look for ways out. We wanted to overcome the circumstances by ourselves, 
At the end, we are disappointed and depressed. However, a man who focuses on God can understand God's leading and follow the lead, no matter what circumstances God put him in. Calvin once said, "A person could not understand." Know himself truly unless he met God first. In the same way, unless God is your center, you will not know who you are, why you are here, what you ought to do. These are ver- all very important questions in life. However, a person who focuses on himself and circumstances cannot answer these questions. Only when we meet God and ask Him, we can understand ourselves. Understand why he puts us here, what he wants us to do. Joseph was a good, God-focused man, though he was put in prison. When God sent the cupbearer and the baker, and they had worries and troubles, he was willing to help them. On one hand, he told them the interpretations belonged to God. On the other hand, because of his daily actions, people knew he was with God often. Do not the interpretations belong to God? Please tell them to me. Joseph was willing to interpret dreams for them. Joseph himself was a dreamer. His dreams at seventeen were still not fulfilled. It was because of his dreams he was sold by his brothers. Thus, he was not now in Egypt. Though his own dreams were pending, he was willing to interpret dreams for others. He was able to overcome his own circumstances. Seeing others in need, he was willing to offer himself to meet the needs of others. Dear brothers and sisters, this is a very important principle when serving in the church. Many times, we ourselves have many troubles. God wants us to help other saints. When others solved their problems, oftentimes is a time when our troubles are gone. Joseph was able to overcome his own outside circumstances and serve others with the gifts God gave him, instead of solving his own problems with the gifts first. Only when a person forgot himself, he can become a clean channel, so God's grace can flow through to those in need. Dear brothers and sisters, our trouble often is that we undervalue ourselves or overvalue ourselves. What is undervaluing ourselves? We felt that we do not have any gifts and unworthy to help others, nor serve the church. This is a lie. Gifts are tied to grace. By the grace of Jesus Christ, you are saved. This grace then becomes your gift. Only when the person who was not saved has no gift, every person who was saved by grace has already experienced the grace of Jesus Christ. He becomes a gifted person. Thus, no one could say that I do not have a gift. As long as you are saved by grace, you are a gifted person. You are a person who could help others. Our our other problems. Is overvalue ourselves when we feel that we have gifts and are willing to help others. We often add our own thoughts, discernments, and preferences in the process of helping. The true help is the grace from God. If He could become a clear, if we could become a clear channel, the grace came to us and not polluted by our natural self, but flowed to others. It will help others. Joseph was a good example. He was a good, God-centered man. He helped others with his gifts in all circumstances. In the process, he was a selfless person. God gave Joseph words, and these words were given to those in need through him. He did not add nor subtract nor beautify anything. We ask God to help us, so we can also be God-centered person like Joseph. Let's pray, Lord. Thank you for giving us the example of Jesus,、uh, of Joseph. Let me learn to have you in the center of my life, in my daily life, ready me to help others with my gifts. Bless my life and my church, so they can be a good testimony for you. In Jesus' name, Amen.